Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and this is yet another video review. Today I will be looking at the ATI Radeon VE video card. Remember, these videos are unedited and these are my opinions. Let's now swing over and have a look at this video card. Okay, so this is the uh, video card itself and this is the, uh, the DVI to analog converter for the monitor it plugs in right here. I'll have a closer look at that in a second. Um, these of course are the cables which come with the video card to enable you to use the uh, S-Video out here on the back. This is the S-Video cable and these two here go together if you're plugging into a device or a TV which does not have S-Video in. So these two go together here and this one here is the S-Video out. Now, to have a closer look at the video card itself, the first thing you'll notice here is that there is no fan on this video card. Uh, there is a heat sink, but there is no fan. So if you're overclocking this, I would recommend either getting a fan to blow across it or get a fan to go on top of it. I'll get back to overclocking in a second. If we have a look here, this is the analog video, this is the DVI for flat panel displays, and this is your TV out. Have a closer look here at the memory. This is 5.5 .5 nanosecond memory. And we we'll have a look at the back here. And as well, let's get back to this adapter. Now, they have included this adapter for the simple fact that this video is really strong when it comes to using it for 2D applications. And you can have dual setup. So you could have one monitor here and one monitor here. This is excellent for doing um, any kind of CAD work or work where you, where you require to have a lot of uh, Windows desktop space. Certainly uh, very, very functional for people who need that kind of function from a card. So again, this is the adapter. As you can see, it plugs in very easily, and you can plug in your flat screen or another analog monitor here. Now, I do have a flat screen. I'll show you in a second. My flat screen is an analog one, and I'll be plugging the main monitor into here as well. So again, one monitor here, one monitor here. You can have dual display. Very cool. Now, going back to overclocking, this card is default at 166. And I managed to get this card up to uh, 200 which is not bad for a card like this. Um, you can, with a fan blowing across it, you can get it up to around 215 or 220. Now some of the results I got in Quake were of course not as good as you'd expect from a GeForce 2 card, but again this card is really truly not designed for hardcore gamers. If you are into gaming, uh, please remember to get a GeForce 2 or a GeForce 3 video card. This card is more tailored towards uh, people who want to do uh, application work, CAD work, uh, not necessarily CAD work, but work that requires dual monitors, dual displays, or having uh, more desktop space and being able to spread it across from one monitor uh, to another and having different things on each monitor. Very functional for that. But the quick results um, Really, this is meant to be played at 800 by 600 at normal settings, around 40 frames per second. On an, uh, this is an AMD 1.2. I have it at 1.4 gigahertz uh, as well. The results at 640 by 480 were around 60 uh, frames per second on normal settings at 32-bit.
color. So the results for gaming is not great. However, um, for 2D quality, of course, the Radeon cards and most ATI cards in general are very good at this. So 2D, this is certainly a card to buy for 2D and uh, application-based card, certainly. I would certainly recommend it for that. Let's now have a look at this card in action using two monitors at the same time. Okay, I wanted to show you here what I have actually on this video card. I have a fan here that's mounted and it's blowing across this heat sink since it does not have a fan on the video card to get a little bit more performance out of it. Again, the default for this card is 166. With this fan blowing across it, I can get approximately uh, 200 to 215 megahertz. So a uh, substantial overclock. Certainly recommend doing either this or a mounting a fan directly on the heatsink. Okay, so what you're looking at here now is uh, two monitors. The one on the left is the main. It's connected into the main connection on the back of the video card. And the flat panel display here is actually connected into the DVI connection on the back of the video card. But I'm using actually the analog converter from DVI to analog because this uh, flat panel display is not direct DVI. Okay, this is the driver which you can use to switch between the monitors. So you have your, your monitors here at the top and of course you can switch uh, between the two you can turn one off, you can make one primary, one secondary and so on and so forth. Um, you can of course, this here is for the video out to like a television set and this here is if the DVI was actually used the flat panel display uh, with the DVI basic color settings here as well and there's an options tab of things like show direct 3D warning messages, enable ATI taskbar icon and so on and so forth. Now going back to the displays of course one display will be higher resolution than the other one. In any case mine are. This is the main one here and of course this one can go a little higher when it comes to Hertz than the 15 inch flat panel display. So what I can do here is I can make the main one, let's say 1600 by 1200, and I can make the 15 inch, which is the max for this one, 1024 by 768 at 75 hertz. So again to have a look at both of these monitors you can see the dual display in action. And uh, to have another look here at the back, this here was the flat panel which I connected, and as you can see the adapter for the DVI to the analog, and of course you could use a regular uh, monitor. You don't necessarily have to use a flat panel display with this adapter. And of course the other one is my main monitor, and again this is the S video out to like a television set. So to sum up this video review I give this um, ATI Radeon VE card an 8 out of 10. Excellent card overall. It has a phenomenal 2D quality. 3D is not so great however I would not recommend buying this card for gaming. Uh, this card is more for application work, good crisp 2D work uh, using two monitors. Also, the price point on this card is very good, from around $130 to $150 Canadian funds. So it's a very reasonably priced card for excellent 2D quality and a lot of enjoyment with regards to doing 2D application work, certainly, on this card. Stay away from it, though, if you're doing 3D gaming. I would go for a GeForce 3 MX uh, card or something along that line as well as maybe a GeForce 2. With GeForce 2, of course, you're going to be spending more money. This is not, as I repeat again, a 3D gaming card, more for 
crisp 2D work. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and this has been another video review. Stay tuned, and in four days I will have a brand new video review. Be sure to check out my website at www.3dgameman.com. Until then, take care.